with all good restaurants, they have people which we call the front line. I wouldn't say courtesy callers, but you're the you're the ones who sort of shape the day. Is that right? I suppose so. I mean, it's uh, front of house work, so it's um, it's uh, I guess we're the ones who've got to go and be. Um, you know, approaching the customers, trying to make sure that they're having the best time, trying to make sure that uh, we balance out the kitchen, balance out the bar, um, trying to get everything coordinated. Um, sometimes people take it for granted, the kind of work which we do, thinking, oh, I'm just taking orders. You know, you're just, um, you're just there to go and just go from point A to point B and communicate, but really it's kind of a lot more than that as well. Just making sure the place runs smoothly and just making sure that, you know, everyone has, uh, has the best time possible. I should have introduced uh, this gentleman's name is Hugo. And how long have you been involved with the University Cafe? Six years actually. So I started here when I was in my first year of uni. And, uh, and basically I went right through. So I did five years of uni and uh, always working here part time as well. So what course did you do? I started off with an undergraduate in arts. So I did a, um, I was focusing on political science and socio legal theory. I uh, went on to do my honours in politics and then finished off with a master's of international politics. So have you got a job yet? Oh, well, I've got this place. <laughs> Pays well, the bills, does enough. Well, yeah. that's right. But I mean, you can have a lot of letters after you, know. Yeah, but, absolutely. Yeah, you can have all that. But what have you learned by being one of, one of the um, the head waiters? Not the head waiters, but a, yeah, an experienced one waiter, one of the troops. Well, do you know what? It's, it's funny because I always say, and I, I do work professionally as well, though. So I work for an aid and development organisation now. But um, I, I say to people that um, the six years that I've been here have actually been quite informative in that I, I do believe you learn more about politics working in a restaurant than you would actually say in a university. Well, why do you say that? Because you're dealing with people on an everyday basis and you kind of get a much better understanding of what people are and their nature. And I think um, I went to Melbourne University as well, so just around the corner over here. And um, a lot of people, they, um, you know, we're in one environment, we're in tutorials with people who've come from the same background, who all speak the same talk, do the same walk. And yeah. when you're in a place like Ligon Street, you get all sorts. You get people from all across the country, all across Australia. And, um, and really you can kind of see a much better mix of what people, yeah. people's concerns are. But, so, do you, but do you engage in political discussions with the customers? Or? Look, occasionally, you know, and I'm yeah. always interested to go and just, um, it's more kind of that uh, a little bit of banter more so yeah. than anything yeah. really deep, but it, it does happen. Yeah. And it's, um, it's surprising as well because people, you know, everyone reads the papers here, Herald Sun and The Age, people always got a thing to say in Melbourne. We do yeah. like to complain a lot, I think. And, well, uh, I hope we're not we're <laughs> like getting like some of the uh, Northern Hemisphere winds. We, no, we, no, 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 nothing like that though, but I mean, I do say right. that um, that's, uh, the cafe culture in Melbourne is right. definitely reinforced by the thing that the weather changes four times a day, so we've always got Correct. something to talk well, about. A bit boring, but it's very important. Yeah, exactly. It's always a, you know, a good a start of a conversation yeah. anyway, and, right. um, and there's plenty of things going on as well around so the So where's this role you've got in this um, overseas uh, development group? Or yeah, so I'm actually, it's called the Oak Tree Foundation. Right. It's Australia's largest youth-run network of volunteers, and it's Australia's only youth-run, um, it's, it's Australia's only youth-run aid and development organisation. Right. So we're all under the age of 26, and my role there is as Victorian State Director. So I actually manage about 100 volunteers across the state in, um, in things like fundraising, we teach young people how to go and be leaders in their community, uh, we teach high school students and university students aid and development knowledge, right. and we also work on overseas projects, mostly in Southeast Asia. And and your position is a paid job? Yes, it is. So what's your... Do you have any opportunities for going doing overseas work? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll actually be heading off to Cambodia at the end of this, uh, at, the, at the start of next week, actually. So uh, that's a three and a half week um, experience for ten volunteers from across the uh, across the country to go and, and gain a better appreciation of what Cambodia is as a country. So what kind of work has been done there um, by NGOs and by organisations like uh, like us. And it's also an opportunity to go and, and meet Cambodians, to meet with government officials, to see journalists and policy makers and really kind of get to grips with what are the challenges facing the nation. Have you been to Cambodia before? No, never. Well, well it will be interesting to get some uh, yeah, absolutely. feedback. Look, it's going to be a really great opportunity. Yeah, well, well done. So, and um, uh, how you, how's your position covered here? Um, they're pretty good, you know. So, like, I'm here about uh, three days a week, which gives yeah. me plenty of time to go and focus on my other oh, job as well. Um, unfortunately, it does mean that I kind of do work seven days. Um, really get any time off, but uh, at the same time, I think it's important when you're a young person to really try to be expanding yourself. You know, you've got a lot of a oh, lot of energy, um, a lot of enthusiasm, and so it's important just to go and you know take advantage of it while well, you're young. Well, it's very very pleasing to see an optimistic <laughs> a young Australian. Yeah, well, thank you very much. That's what Australia's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Now I know a lot of people have asked you today, where'd you buy those glasses? 
Um, I actually got these are these are imported from, so I, I can't say uh, you know on Australia Day I should be wearing Australia no, made. No, but uh, but these are actually uh, these are from a, a store on Brunswick Street. So two, well, two Brunswick, just two down the road. Over, that's yeah. it. And um, and they uh, specialize in European frames, so these are actually made in France. Made in France. Well, that's the uh, fashion design uh, leading country in the world. Well, that's it. But you know, if, with glasses, you wear them every day, so it's well, important that they reflect the kind of person right. you are. Well, I got to wear glasses. I'm too old to wear them. Well, here you go. Thanks for looking after us. Great pleasure, as always. Uh, very pleased to see you making progress and earning an income. Thanks very much, yeah. Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, behind every good frontline office material is the people who work between the front desk and the kitchen. Yes, it's us. Tara, <laughs> now how long have you been at the University Cafe? Since September. Since September. So just a couple of months. Now, I haven't picked up an accent. Yet. Which part of the world are you from? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe? Well, yeah. we <laughs> certainly have a multicultural society on the uh, staff here, don't we? Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. And I noticed you got the Australian tattoo on today and a few other yeah. permanent ones. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <They're normal. laughs> right. So what brought you to Carlton or uh, University Cafe? Um, my flatmate actually. She started working here and when I met her she introduced me to Brett and Paul and everyone and so I started jumping oh, here. Right. So she's still working here? She is, yes. <laughs> What's her name? Susanna. Susanna. She's a Moroccan Italian lady. Yeah, that's her, yes. Well, there you go. So what, what is, I mean, I don't know how long you've been in Australia, but what does Australia Day mean to you? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, it's a day where everyone can celebrate being Australian and oh. everything we do, I guess. A lot of fun for everyone. Yeah. Oh, and how you enjoyed being in Melbourne or Carl? Yeah, I love Melbourne. Melbourne's oh. probably my favourite city in Australia. Is it? Which yeah. other cities have you been in? Uh, Sydney, Adelaide, Darwin, Perth. Oh. Oh. And you've seen any other parts of the uh, Pacific region? Have you travelled much since you've been um, Yeah, in December I went to Phuket with Susanna. Oh, right. And then in March we're actually going to Italy. So you're going to chaperone, are you sure? Yeah. Well, then, you're coming back for Yeah, in a few months we're going for a little while. Oh, very good. Very good. Well, other reasons for coming to University Cafe, you've got very friendly staff, you've got an international background and uh, You've been very good uh, looking after all the customers here, including me. Always. So we, which we appreciate, and uh, here's a little flag to go on with the business. Thank you. I'll, I'll Happy Australia Day. <laughs> I, we didn't have a Zimbabwe flag, but what, what, what's the colour of that flag? Uh, blue, red, green, white. Oh, black. Well, we're not far out. We're only missing green. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you have a good day, and thank, thank you for you. helping. You us. too. Thank you very much.